we go. Getting excited, Mike. Let it drop. Hello. Oh, and welcome to Stream Geeks Live. Mike just wants to show off my new OBS shirt that I have here. Uh, welcome to Stream Geeks Live. A little bit of a rough start, but it's okay. Thank you for being here. I am watching the chat on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, we're excited because a brand new beta of OBS is now available, OBS 26. We're going to dig right into it and show you guys all the new features. So let's get started. Now, if you're an OBS user, let me know in the chat what you guys like to do with OBS. I know a lot of different people use it in a lot of different ways. So your chats will come up right here. I wanted to say hi to Richard and hi 3 Energy. Got his, we got his attention because of the new OBS integration for Zoom. And uh, it's really, really cool. It helps a lot with virtual webcams. So we'll dig right into that. Coming up next, let's do it, Mike. All right, so let's dig into this presentation. So OBS 26 uh, has just been released, and I thought it would be smart to look back at OBS 24 and OBS 25 really quickly before we get into 26, in case some of you guys missed uh, some of the great features that have come out over the past couple weeks, or past couple years, really. It's usually about one update per year. So first of all, with OBS 25... Um, we got SRT support, and that's Secure Reliable Transport. And that is a great, easy way to reliably stream video with a time synchronous opportunity over the wide area network. Another cool feature that we got is the T-Bar support. So for those of you that use um, OBS in... Uh, studio mode, you'll notice there's a T-bar there now that you can enable, which is kind of nice. So the T-bar support is cool. We also got some browser source improvements. So those of you who bring websites in as sources, we got some new layouts, which we'll take a look at, and some drag and drop overlays. So you can just drag files into OBS now, and it makes it really easy to use. Now, in OBS 24, we got controllable browser source audio. We got the custom browser panels, a really cool dynamic bitrate option, which allows OBS to use your uh, NIC card, your network interface card, to dynamically adjust the bitrate that you're streaming at, which is really nice. That's a really cool feature. Not many streaming solutions have that, actually. And then we got hardware decoding for media sources. This is just a list of some of the great updates. But ever since OBS 20, if you guys can remember, we've had the ability to have this awesome studio mode. And then I can't remember when exactly we got these custom browser docs, but you can see here, I'll turn studio mode off. You can have these custom web browser docs inside of the application. And those have really changed the game uh, you can see we've added a PTZ camera controller to OBS here. Um, and uh, we'll take a look at some of that stuff later. But that's been out for a little while, but it's really game changing. What's new for 26? Well, this is probably the biggest new feature in OBS that I have been waiting for forever. A built-in virtual camera button. So there has been a virtual camera button plugin for OBS for a while. But the cool thing about this is, is that now we have the start recording button, or sorry, start virtual camera button built into the controls. So the virtual camera, which I'll show, uh, it's now right here and I'm using it right now. So we'll take a look at that. Uh, this is built right in just the way that vMix and Wirecast have it. Uh, it's built right in here, so you can start streaming, start recording, and start that virtual camera option. This is great for sending your video directly into Zoom. So if I show you guys this, you can see here that my video from OBS, okay, is going right into Zoom. So you can see uh, Zoom there, and you can see that anything I send, if I switch cameras, 
uh, it basically switches cameras in OBS. It switches cameras into Zoom. So that works with Zoom, Skype, WebEx, any software that uses a webcam. So that's pretty cool. I'm really excited about that. It does not currently work for Mac. Um, so keep that in mind, but you've got the start virtual camera button there. There's no need for a plugin for that. So if there are any questions along the way, just let me know. But I wanted to cover everything and then we'll, we'll play around with it because I have it installed and we're, we're using it right now. Although it's worth noting that OBS 26 is in beta. So if you use OBS to stream your church's service on a weekly basis, if you rely on OBS for your main production software, I would recommend sticking with 25 until it's out of until 26 is out of beta. Um, betas are for programmers, they're for people testing the software. And I always like to live on the edge and I use the beta. Um, it's fun for me. I haven't found any bugs, but um, we're going to see if we can find some today, maybe. So we'll see. Um, Daniel Wright is asking really quickly do we have a link to OBS 26? Yes, Tess. We do have the link. Did you put it, Tess, in the uh, in the description of the video? I sure did, but I will okay, also great. go ahead and share it in the chat to make it easier for everyone. Awesome. So Tess is here, by the way. Um, she has not gone. So <laughs> Tess is here. here. And Tess has an OBS shirt. I do. So I couldn't find the picture, Tess. I don't know if you'll be able to find it. I don't want you to go on a rabbit hole. But uh, I met Jim Bailey, the creator of OBS at TwitchCon 2019, and I got this shirt. So anyway, Mike's got one too. We've all got one. And we got a chance to kind of rub elbows with the greatness. Um, they're really great. So... 316 Cast Media is asking no Mac version. Really quickly, yes, there is a Mac version. Um, so that's a good news. In fact, before we go too much further, why don't we go ahead? One of the things I'd like to do is I would like to show you guys how to download OBS 26 um, because it's a little, little tricky because it's not necessarily um, available to uh, the public yet. So there's a link in the video description below that you need to go to and it opens up GitHub essentially. And so what we're going to do is I'm, I just want to show you guys how to get this. Um, it's basically the OBS project GitHub and you can see it goes over all of the new features such as the virtual camera, which is they're going to add support for the virtual camera for Mac and Linux in the future, in future versions, but not currently available today. Um, there's a new source toolbar we'll take a look at. Media controls, really big, actually really cool. We'll look, take a look at that. A new AI-based noise suppression method. So we're ex excited to take a look at that. Um, and by the way, just to give credit where credit is due, um, you can see this little, uh, it says Jim here. That means Jim worked on adding the virtual camera. You can see here that DDR Boxman, Jim, and CG2121 worked on the source toolbar. So you can actually get to know some of these contributors. OBS is developed by a world network of contributors who contribute to this open source software. So I won't go into all of this today. We don't have time. But uh, if you click into, you have to actually click into OBS Studio 26 and scroll down, you will see a Mac and a Windows version of the downloadables. So if you download this for Windows or Mac, that is where you get OBS 26, just for reference. All right, so hopefully I didn't get too far off on our original uh, plan here. So the next big thing that uh, after the new virtual camera, which is super useful and helpful, there's this new sources bar right here. And basically when you select a source, it will allow you to quickly open up the properties and the filters and actually do even more. Uh, so we'll look at that. For example, I noticed that you can change colors 
and uh, change, change files, change logos. And that's actually where, if you're playing a video, uh, it will come up now with a little start and stop button and show you where you are in the video. So very cool. Um, noise suppression, we'll take a look at that. Everyone should be using noise suppression, by the way. I don't care how good your microphone is. Noise suppression will help it sound better, most likely. And you should try it out because it's a brand new AI-based noise suppression uh, called RN Noise, and it's pretty cool. So we'll take a look at that. If you ever want to take a screenshot during your live stream with OBS, there's a new hotkey that you can assign to take screenshots. There's new sRGB support that's enabled by default now, so OBS in general will just look better and more color accurate. Um, if you're a big audio uh, fan, they have a new checkbox here to look at the volume uh, in a percentage. There's a new QS. V encoder, which will improve performance with Intel GPUs. Think about Intel Nook computers. A lot of people using Intel Nooks. Um, the, the new uh, Intel i7 processors uh, now have an embedded GPU inside of the um, computers, and they're super affordable. They're not as expensive or as large as the NVIDIA graphics cards, becoming way more popular in the small form factor computer market. And the GPUs are now can be taken advantage of inside of OBS. That's a big deal for a lot of people using Intel Nooks and other computers like that. A little bit of an improved interface in the transition stock we'll take a look at and an increased update rate of the level meters. So overall, the audio side of things in OBS looking a lot better. Here's the link. So take a screenshot or just get the link below. That is the link. And then... Uh, the biggest thing here, which I do want to review today, and if anyone has questions, I'll take a look in the comments below, uh, connecting OBS to Zoom. So we're going to take a look at that because I know a lot of people are excited about that. And then finally, I just wanted to mention, I'm going to be updating the unofficial guide to OBS. So this is a really popular book. You can get it for free at ptzoptics.com slash book. It shows you everything you need to know about OBS to get started. There's also a free coupon code right there that you can take the online course that Mike and I updated less than a year ago. But Mike, we got to update it again. I'm ready. You ready? Well, we'll have to get to that when we get that free moment of time that never seems to happen. Okay, here we go. So now we're going to actually take a look at OBS 26. So you can see up here in the top right, it says 26 and it says dash RC. That means release candidate one. So if you're following along closely with the betas, you'll find that, you know, it'll be RC1, RC2, RC3. And then finally, when that RC is removed, that means it's out of beta and we are rocking and rolling with the new version of OBS. I've done this many times with, or at least followed along, and it's going to be a couple weeks of testing, and, and we're all part of that now. So congratulations, you are part of the beta testing. Now, the first thing I'd like to do is add some text to this uh, scene to show the new sources area. So we'll just call it text, no big deal. And I'm just going to call this testing... OBS 26, that's good enough for me. Now, what you'll see when we uh, click this is now directly in this little bar right here, not only does it tell us kind of, we can actually, I think we can actually change the text. We can change the text right there. Pretty cool. You used to have to go into a properties menu to do that. We can change the color really quickly and we can change the font really quickly. So, from a design standpoint, this is so much easier to use. We can get to the filters super quick. Now, I'm not going to do any filters right now. And we can get to the properties really quickly. So it's much easier than going down here to that cog. And it, it opens up, depending on what you have, additional options. Like this one's just perfect example of, you know, quick and easy. Okay. So... I'm really liking this. And by the way, uh, I'm using the NDI uh, Telestrator here. This is a little Telestrator. Um, it's right here. And uh, this is a touchscreen Telestrator that I'm using with NDI. NDI has been built into OBS for at least, 
I'm going to say two years. Um, so that's been around for a while. Now, the big deal with OBS 26, obviously, is this virtual camera. So you can see I have that on. If I stop the virtual camera, something interesting, I actually haven't done that. If we stop the virtual camera, uh, you'll see that my webcam now uh, shows up with an OBS, uh, no camera uh, symbol. So when we go back to OBS and we hit start virtual camera, now my virtual video pumps through. So uh, that is the way to send video into Zoom using the OBS virtual camera option available in Zoom. So that's pretty nice. Um, let's get back to OBS here. Now, uh, to be honest, that actually is the majority of what is available today. Again, uh, let's say we so, so select a source inside of OBS 26. This bar at the top shows exactly what we've selected. And it also, if it's a camera, it gives us a drop down of all of the cameras that are available to me. Um, so if I choose vMix video, for example, uh, it would bring that in. So much easier to use. I think it's becoming more and more user friendly. Um, I wanted to explain this here. This actually is the Huddlecam HD Pro. Can we show that with this camera? Um, I have a couple different cameras set up with my OBS setup. This is the Huddlecam HD Pro. It's connected via USB right to my um, to OBS right now, but I can actually run uh, the new Huddlecam HD Pro app and it serves up an IP address. So this new, uh, this, this camera, even though it's only connected via USB, uh, which is the way that it can be controlled via Zoom, uh, I can actually control it uh, via this app on Windows and Mac and it creates an IP address. And the cool thing about that is with, with OBS, we have all of these docs. And if you're unfamiliar with OBS docs, essentially what they allow you to do is um, add a website to your OBS interface. And so what I've done here is I have the Huddlecam HD Pro webcam controller. I added the server URL to that. And now I've got a neat little controller where I can zoom my webcam in and pan it and tilt it with electronic pan tilt zoom. Now, the same thing I'm doing over here with a PTZ optics camera, I have the ability to uh, move the camera here with um, optical zoom. So this is a, a, like a legitimate pan tilt zoom camera that I am able to put a web interface into OBS. Now, perhaps more popularly, many broadcasters add uh, Twitch, Twitch stream elements, like stream elements and stream labs to control what they're up to there as well. So a lot of stuff happens um, in OBS that you can do with these web browser docs. And then if we get rid of these web browser docs, I'll just get rid of them really quickly. Uh, and we do studio mode. Uh, in case this is new for folks, I'll quickly demonstrate this. This side of OBS over here is preview. So this is what you're, you're getting ready to go live with. And then this side over here is program, and that's your output. That's what is live right now. So this transition area in the middle is your options for going left to right. So for example, if I use the T-bar, that's a custom fade that you can control, okay? Now, if I use the cut, it just cuts back and forth. If I do the fade, it fades. And I also have the ability to add a bunch of other transitions as well. In fact, a new one is a, a stinger effect that is now available as well. So to do that, we do need to go down to the bottom right down here and click add stinger. And in order to add that stinger, we do need to create, open up a transparent video file to do that. Now that is getting to some advanced stuff, but it has been 
um, available in OBS for a little while. So some of you guys may already know that. The main thing is this, this virtual camera option. Studio mode's been in, available for a while. Um, another new feature that may be fairly new to folks is the new scenes area can be shown in a list mode or in a grid mode. So it's kind of a nice way to, to look at things. And then the other thing that's really cool is you can click and drag and move things around. So you can really rearrange the OBS interface however you like. So for example, I've seen some folks put the audio mixer over here, uh, which is, is one, one way that I really like to look at it like this. In fact, you can really make OBS look a lot more like, let's say, vMix even, um, by rearranging some of these panels. I actually like to look at it that way. I'm really used to having the scenes in the bottom left, for example, and then you can see you can nest them on top of each other to make even more options for grouping your controls together. So. It's really incredible. And then you have, now you have this other little bar up here to make it easier to manipulate the sources. So it's a source media bar. Now, one more thing before we go to Q&A that I'd like to show is if we choose a video file. Now, I'm gonna have to find a video file. I know I've got something here. Oh, look, this is a fun little video. Now, if we play this video, you can see here right in the center that we have a media control bar now. So that's pretty cool. So we can stop, pause, move things around. So I can pause this, I can scrub the video. And especially if you are in, oops, I hit the settings button. If you're in studio mode, um, and let's say for example, you are currently looking at a, you're live with a webcam, right? But you need to um, cut to uh, a specific part of a video. You can scrub to it. And then when you get it to the right spot, like this is actually our studio before it was our studio. Wow. Anyway, you can start it there and then fade to it with the T-bar or use the cut button, obviously, or like the fade. So I think it's time to open up for Q&A now. Um, we'll go ahead and ask any questions that people have. And uh, I'm really excited about it. In fact, it looks like we're getting some questions here. Uh, Rodney is saying they stream for, uh, use OBS to stream their church services and Bible study. I think that's uh, pretty, pretty standard. Tom is new to OBS. So Tom, ask any question. I could maybe even, I'll do a little overview, just a high level kind of overview of building an OBS template. And by the way, at streamgeeks.us slash graphics, we have a full graphics pack of graphics that can help you get started to really make um, things going. Armand Studios said he literally just subscribed to this channel 30 minutes and he's currently about to start using OBS. Well, this is great. And we're happy to get you started and uh, ask any questions again uh, throughout this process. Uh, this is uh, Desi says he uses uh, OBS to live stream his church stream and also host keyboard lessons. Here's a question coming in from Highlight Flights. Can you apply a virtual camera output to individual scenes and sources like the plugin? That is an interesting question and worth investigating. I do not believe that you can. And unfortunately, I uninstalled the virtual camera plugin. So I have to look into that. Thank you for that question highlight fights because that's an interesting one. So I want to explain what he's saying. I, I don't have a way to test it because I don't have the plugin. I, un I uninstalled the virtual camera plugin because now it's built into OBS. What highlight fights is saying, and this is true for many plugins, is that the plugin adds special features to OBS. So the virtual camera plugin, not only does it allow you to output your, the 
output of vMix, or sorry, OBS into software like Zoom and others that accept webcams, but it also allows you to choose a specific source and like he's saying, a specific scene, a specific plugin, um, specific source inside of OBS and make that always be the output to Zoom no matter what you're streaming uh, or in the output of OBS. Uh, that's a filter. And uh, we'll look at filters because we still need to look at some filters anyway. So I'll explain that. Uh, but that's true with the NDI plugin as well. So we'll take a peek at that. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. Um, to be 100% honest. Now, so basically there's nothing new. It's the same as the plugin, says Giant. Yes, except for the fact that we do have this beautiful, if we cut to it, um, button now for controlling everything. So I am very happy to see this new button down here. Here it is um, to start the and stop the virtual camera because that is a worthwhile feature just to make it easier for everybody is zoom the only software compatible with obs's virtual camera output no I, this should work regardless of the software that you're using it should work with pretty much any webcam um, that's available today okay any software that uses a webcam. Is NDI Tools integrated to OBS 26? No, it is not, and it never will be. Um, NDI is not open source. Everything, every plugin, every piece of OBS must be open source, and New Tech wants to keep their software royalty-free, but not open source. So if it was open source, everyone could just Take it from them, I suppose. So it is, it is a plugin. It will always be a plugin. Now, um, Jeff Dickerson saying, does the older virtual camera plugin work for Mac? No. There's never that I know of been a plugin for Mac that does virtual camera. Um, template would be good. Uh, my iOS OBS not matching. I see connecting and never connects. Okay, sorry. Not sure about that one. All right, a little off topic, but have you ever found a way to isolate callers audio in Zoom and put it into separate channels? No, never figured out a way to do that. Uh, can you suggest minimum processor and RAM speed for OBS on a Mac having some serious lag issues? Um, well, if you if it if your computer truly is not working with a with a Mac and what you're trying to do in OBS. Is it possible to move to a PC? Because PCs are, you know, everything is usually built for a PC first, then it's kind of ported over to Mac. Um, and PCs are generally better for streaming. I am not sure what, I mean, I would say an i5 processor minimum, i7 recommended, eight, megabit, eight megabytes of RAM minimum, 16 recommended. Can you touch on the RNN noise AI? It, AI is thrown around as a buzzword too often. Let's take a peek. I was going to do that anyway. So what is a filter and how do you apply it to uh, a source? Well, uh, this answers a couple questions that we've had today. One is we can right click it or now we can go to this new little media bar here, which is the cool part. This is, this is a really great UI, right? User interface upgrade. We can select an input and we can click the filters button and that will open up the filters area of OBS where a lot of great things happen. Um, Bill is correcting me. I apologize. Mac virtual camera plugin does exist, but it only is supported via High Sierra 10.13, 10.14 and Catalina. So it does, it does. I've never used it, but I guess it does exist. So that is good to have, good to know. Now, when you select something like a media source here, you have the ability to add filters. And for example, um, we can add a noise suppression filter to this video. And the old one was called Speaks. And you could choose your suppression level. The new one is RNN Noise. It's higher quality, a little bit higher CPU usage, but it gives you no options right? It is 
artificial intelligence. It doesn't need your input. <laughs> it is going to figure out how to do noise suppression on its own. And I do trust uh, Hugh Jim Bailey when he says it's higher quality. Um, I did a little testing on this. The way to test it really would be to apply the old one and go ahead and play that video. Now, Mike, when I play this video, let's go into studio mode here. Are you hearing it on your end? Do you have my NDI input? Um, do you have my NDI input uh, like muted or something? Because this would be kind of fun to show off. Where's my NDI input? It's right there. Number eight. Scroll down a little bit. Yep, you've got it muted. Just turn it up. That one there. Oh, you're still not getting anything. Mm -hmm. Huh. All right. Um... That's odd. Well, we'll have to do some testing with this then. Uh, I apologize. We're not ready to show this live because the way we are studios set up, my laptop here is uh, separate from the streaming computer that we're using. So I apologize. I can't, I can't really show that, but that is how you add it. So we would go into filters using our new little filters button. And then you would do a recording or do a stream and then try the new method as well. So that is the new method there for doing that. Does the new media control bar apply to built-in replay or replay filters? Interesting question. Wow, somebody has been, is a, is a, a, a big time OBS user. Wow. Um, okay. Oh, look at that. Dedicated NDI output audio only. Huh, apply. Get that audio out of here. Um, that's a good question because we have this media bar here that we're taking a look at. Let's go to advanced audio properties really quickly. This is the audio monitoring. You're not seeing any audio over there, are you? Okay. Um, I don't have the replay buffer set up. That is in an, in the advanced area of OBS, and I don't have the replay buffer all set up yet to test that. So I apologize. Now there is something that we haven't talked, to, didn't really look at in depth, which is the new hotkeys. So in the new hotkeys here. There is a new feature. Oh, look, there's a feature for starting and stopping the virtual camera. That's kind of cool. I don't know if you, how important that would be. But the screenshot output. So let's just say I do Shift A, and then I get a screenshot. So close. Yes, save. Boom, I just took a screenshot. Now, generally, with, with the app, those screenshots are stored in pictures, the pictures folder in your, um, in your Windows thing. I'm, I haven't been able to figure out where those are stored or, and, and to be honest, to see if it is working. I don't know if that's a bug or not. Let's see where my settings are, my output settings are. So it says recording path desktop. So let's see if, they're going on my desktop. Oh yeah. So that up, oh, yeah, the screenshots are coming up. Okay. So just to give you an example, here is my desktop here. So uh, if I were to, let's just open up the dock just so I can get a different space. I'm just gonna zoom this camera in a little bit. And just going to move it a little. Why is that doing that? I'm not sure. I'm just going to zoom it in a little just to get a different, different view. Then I'm going to hit my shift A. And now that image, that screenshot, 
should be there when I, yep, there it is. So there's my new screenshot. So the screenshot shortcut is working, so that's nice. Just goes right to your recording path folder. Now, what is the make and mic of the headset that you're, you're using? We get that question a lot. This is the DPA Define microphone. And what makes it sound so good, besides the fact that it's a great microphone, is that we have some VST3 plugins on VMix uh, for NS1 noise suppression and Renaissance Axe robust kind of radio style uh, compression. Um, and attunement. But if we take a look at OBS again here, something that a lot of people don't realize is that you can go into your microphone source, you can go to filters, and you can add a VST2 plugin. And let's see what we have here. I got a couple here. Um, now, these are plugins that add additional control. Um, over your audio. So this is a really nice one called Recomp, and this is allowing me to add some compression, attack, and release, uh, and a high pass and a low pass to the audio. So OBS can get really good sounding audio, and I'm excited to see the new noise compression. I'm sure Jim Bailey is excited about that. All right. So how do you get the chat questions to pop up on the screen? Graphics, good question. Um, if we show this here, um, and we'll show this in a couple different ways. This is my little tablet I have here. And you can see it right there. Look at that. Oh, look at that fish eye. Wow, you can really tell that there's a fish eye. Um, but for example here, let me just, uh, I always like to manually focus this and get it just right. There we go. So let's say Stan here has got a question. He says, wow, RN noise is really AI in general since it implements the models that are what AI are really about. Boom. And I just click it and it shows. So that is a really cool uh, way. That's called vMix Social. Now, uh, let's see here. It says, hey guys, all this seems pretty cool. Is there now an undo feature for the editor or is it planned? That would be really great. Um, there is, as far as I know, no undo feature inside of OBS, but it's funny that you say that because there is one available in vMix. So vMix has the undo feature. It's one of those like little features that you end up using a lot. And I use it in vMix all the time. I'm like, oh, oops, oops, uh, 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 undo. So that's nice to have. Um, not seeing RN noise in the Mac version. Jeff, did you install the latest OBS 26 release candidate? If you did, please let us know because I'd be interested to know why it's not in the Mac version. Um, this is saying he's using an NDI encoder for his Sony A7i and Scarlett sound card. Video is lagging. What do you suggest for audio and video sync? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. So this is probably the number one issue people have with OBS. Honestly, it's the number one issue that people have with live streaming in general. And vMix is really smart. They actually build in latency they actually, I think they ping the USB drivers of the audio interfaces, like a Scarlet, and then adjust depending on how fast. I, I don't know how they do it, but they, it's interesting. I never had audio sync issues until I started using OBS. And it's not a big deal. You go into your advanced audio properties. So how do we get there? Well, we go into the audio mixer. And by the way, get rid of that vertical layout. We hit the cog. We go to advanced audio properties. Now, this is where we can offset the sync. So there's no way to delay the audio, or there's no reason to delay the audio, of, or sorry, the video. It's almost always handled in audio. So I would start by adding like 100 milliseconds of latency, and then add 100, then add 125, then add 150, and see how many milliseconds in increments of 25 that you need to increase until the, everything matches. Now, we actually have a video on this uh, specific topic, and I'll mention this quickly because it's so awesome that you can do... Uh, we have a video that's called the OBS Audio Sync Video. Let's see if I can find this on Dropbox here real quick. 
Um, it's called the OBS Audio Sync. It's a tool. You can download it. Uh, Audio Sync. You can download it, and what it allows you to do is actually uh, sync your audio up perfectly. So let me show this really quickly. Let's download this. So what this tool allows you to do is you, you play this tool on the television. So what I'm gonna do quickly is I'm gonna just zoom out a little. What? There we go. All right, so this tool right here, what you do is you play this tool um, and you record it with your camera and your microphone. And there's a click sound each time that that hits zero. And what you can do, for an example, is you can record it with your camera. Like, for example, uh, who was asking this question? I'm trying to find his, his thing here. Uh, this is for DJ Migueligu. Um, use your Sony a7 and use your Scarlett sound card to record this video and then take a picture of that video that you've recorded with your stuff. And when you take that picture, boop, it'll tell you exactly. Now this is telling us right now that there is exactly 126 milliseconds of audio sync issue where if you want it to be zero, right, you would add that much. So it's a really great tool for that. You can Google on Stream Geeks OBS audio sync test. How about that for an answer? Okay, what else do we have here? What is causing OBS to constantly use up my memory even when it's not in use? Uh, it may actually be in use, quanti, and you don't even know it. So check your, your tray, your application tray and make sure that it's actually closed. Because sometimes OBS likes to live in there and suck up your computer's resources without telling you. It's kind of uh, annoying. Um, three Energy has a Mindberg clock source for DaVinci Resolve for syncing. Okay. Jeff has 26.0.0-1 RC1. So I need to tell that to Jim. He should make that more clear. You know, a lot of the new features do not get rolled out into uh, Mac, sadly. Uh, sometimes it takes a whole year to get it into Mac. Sometimes it takes a couple months. Um, but that is just generally the way it goes, unfortunately. I do have to give credit to OBS for managing a Windows, Mac, and Linux version at the same time. So they're pushing all fronts forward, whereas companies like vMix they stay ahead of the pack, but they only develop for Windows. So, you know, that's something to consider as well. Um, I guess that's it. Do we have any final questions, guys? We do, Paul. There's a few on Facebook that I want to make sure that we cover. Okay. Um, the first one is coming in from David Johnson. Hi, David. I'm getting ready to convert from iPad and Facebook to OBS. I need to buy a computer for OBS. Is there... Any information or PDF with recommending computer features needed to run OBS? Well, first of all, I will recommend a computer with a graphics card. Now, that may seem obvious, but um, computers with graphics cards, when you're running a video production software, can actually really take the load off your CPU. So, um, I would recommend a computer with an NVIDIA graphics card if you can afford it. Um, laptops, like this Dell laptop I have here, can have pretty nice NVIDIA graphics cards inside of them. And what does that do? Well, a graphics card, if you tell OBS, and I'll show this in um, OBS, and I'll share my screen in Zoom so that you guys can see this. This is an important thing. If you really are doing a couple different cameras or trying to do some more advanced stuff with OBS, four or five, 10 scenes, what you can do in the encoder side is you can choose hardware. And hardware would be the NVENC, they're calling it, but essentially that means enable advanced encoding so that my NVIDIA graphics card does all the encoding work. And so when your, your graphics card is able to do all of that work, 
your CPU usage goes down a lot. So your computer has a CPU, that would be like your i5 or your i7 processor. And then your computer may have a GPU, your graphics calculator as well. Oh, someone gave us a super chat. Thank you so much for the super chat. Um, appreciate it. So with that being said, um, I would recommend a laptop with an i7 processor. I would go with Windows. I would go with a, obviously, Windows 10 64-bit uh, operating system. And I would get a graphics card, whatever you can afford. They get pretty pricey if you go with the newer ones. But the older ones, the, you know, the prices have come down a lot. So if you're going with a laptop, look for a laptop that has a graphic, NVIDIA graphics card inside. Um, and G-Sync is really nice as well. If you are going with a, like, uh, a more affordable computer, take a look at the brand new Intel Nooks. They have the brand new, and I'll have to look this up just to make sure I'm saying this properly. But if you look at the latest release of um, OBS 26, they're saying there's improved performance with the Intel GPUs. Um, so you could take a look at the forums on that. The Intel processors now, if you get a computer with Intel, you're going to be going on the right track. So. Our super chat was a question. Oh, it was. Okay. What is it? I don't know. I can read it to you, Paul. Okay. Satchel says, hello, what NDI device do you recommend to incorporate gaming consoles into your live streams via OBS? Currently using Scan Converter via dual PC setup. Got it. Um, dual PCA setup is a great way to um, bring and capture your your systems. Um, you know, there's been a huge explosion in mobile gaming. Um, and so to answer your question, uh, one thing that I'm a big fan of is uh, the NDI capture app. In fact, I have this little NDI um phone app that maybe I could show you guys really quickly. Check out how cool this is. This is my NDI phone. The other thing that we were showing off earlier was the NDI Telestrator. That looks kind of crazy, but essentially this is like the ability to, you can see it coming up. So I just made all of that. And then look at that. That is all a uh, overlay alpha channel NDI there. And then these are capture cards. So if your network is lagging, you can get a capture card. Uh, the dual NDI setup is okay, but it takes up a lot of bandwidth and it can be, and tell me your experience, but it could be a little choppy sometimes. Capture cards are definitely a little better and you can even get uh, NDI capture cards as well. Now, of course, if you're doing a dual PC setup, you definitely are going to need to run ethernet to every computer that's using it. And so for example, I just want to show our dual PC setup. So this PC, right, is running OBS. Um, I'm actually also running vMix, as crazy as that sounds. But the reason why is because I can do just a little bit of production on this PC which, follow me here, this computer is capturing my secondary monitor, right? And all of that gets sent to our production PC. So we are doing a two PC production as well. We're not doing gaming. Um, and then we're using vMix over here. And so everything that I do on that computer comes over here. So I, I, I think I would say that yes, your um, dual PC system is good. I don't think there's anything wrong with it, to be honest. Um, I like dual PC setups. So I'd say you're good unless you uh, think that it was uh, it needs to be improved. There's our YouTube Super Chat alert. That's how I knew. Like, oh, sweet. YouTube Super Chat. Very cool. All right. So hopefully that answers you. I mean, uh, the only other thing that I would say that is an op option is if, if you show my my uh, fo my uh, thing here, there is an NDI HX capture app. Um, so check this out. So essentially, when I do that, now let's say I'm playing a video game on my phone. 
Now, anything I do on my phone uh, is actually captured via an NDI source um, that can be pulled into the computer. So you want to try that real quick, Mike? I don't know if it's going to... I've never actually done this, but I've actually always been kind of interested uh, to see if it works or not. Let's see here. So does it work? Mm. Are you getting audio? I let me look here. Uh, let me see. I don't hear any audio. I don't, I don't hear or see any audio coming in. I know you can. I just we we don't have time to really figure it all out right now. But that's pretty interesting. Look how quickly, like that is incredible. To be honest, um, like look just consider how quickly I went from. Think about how quickly I went from literally my smartphone to broadcasting. Look at how good that looks. It's I mean, it's just, quality. it's great quality. Um, and now I'm doing a game capture with my phone in a matter of seconds. Like no cables, nothing. So big, big uh, props to NDI for what they've done with this stuff. Really, really cool. So now I just go back to this. I mean, mind blowing, right? So just stop. Done. Capture cards, they're finally becoming a thing of the past. Now, how audio and all that works, I'm not sure. All right, so that's pretty much it for our show today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. It was a pleasure having you. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Mike just released a great tutorial video on OBS. You can check out in the videos on YouTube. Thanks, guys. Take care.